Alrighty guys, welcome to another virtual lab. I know that we were expecting to um, be able to do this all together in class. Um, unfortunately, just that is the way of the year, so we have to be flexible. Um, I do have a plan that um, should we be able to all come back together soon, we can kind of go through this lab together in person. But in the meantime, we're gonna go through it virtually so you guys can kind of watch me go through all the steps. You can use my results as your results. So let's just get started here, why don't we? Um, so the first part of our hair analysis lab is to make a scale impression with a hair from our head. So I've got my slide right here, and then I've got my latex, and I've got my little bag of hairs that I collected from my head. I also put some hairs from my arm in this bag for a later part of this lab, and I cannot find them now, so I might have to pluck even more off. Under these ones we don't need the follicles so i'm just going to grab just a, a, a few pieces of hair here just so we can have um, a few different casts in case one of them doesn't come out as clear as we'd like um, and this is going to take a little bit to dry so we're going to get the cast ready and then um, after that we'll kind of look at the other hairs and then come back to this so what we're going to do shake this up um, we're going to place one drop of latex on the end of our slide here. So let's do our drop. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of our slides to then smear this across. You get to see this is my first time doing the lab, so you guys get to see me struggle a little bit, which is fine. It's just showing us that even teachers are not perfect, but you guys already know that. Okay. So, so we've got our, our latex nice and over evenly laid out here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some hair on it. <laughs> so here's one strand. We want it to just lie nice and long um, as just a chance to then get a full impression. We'll do a second strand here. Let's do our third strand here. I've got three strands in the latex and we're just gonna let that dry. Let me just put that like right here. We'll know when it's dry when it's all nice and clear. So while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and do a wet mount slide preparation with one of the hairs on our head. Um, so doing a wet slide mount just means that we are going to um, put some water down and then that'll help us visualize the slide a little bit better on the microscope. So let me get a pipette. I will be right back. <laughs> so I'm going to do my drop of water in the middle. Let me find one of my hairs from my head has the root intact because we want to see the follicle that's it's kind of like the um, the best kind of evidence you can get when it comes to hair because remember the follicle is what has that genetic information so I've got one strand here that's got a good follicle on it make sure that the follicle is actually in the water right there okay one thing that's cool about using my hair for this study is that because my hair is in fact purple and bleached, you'll be able to see um, the impacts of different substances on the hair. Um, so there we go. We've got the slide laid down, ready to be examined. I'm gonna get it nice and lined up and then I'll let you guys see what I'm seeing. So here you can see my follicle. I was able to get the cell tissue. Um, this is once again, kind of the cream of the crop when it comes to hair evidence, since the follicle does contain the DNA. So that was pretty good there. Then this is actually really interesting because you can see the line of demarcation on this strand. So I've indicated the line of demarcation here, and that's where you can just see where I last bleached my hair and deposited purple pigment, just because of the difference in the two tones. 
And then as we go along the strand of hair, you'll notice that the purple increases in saturation and intensity. And that's just because I've bleached my hair a few times now. Every time it grows out and enough of the roots emerge, I like to bleach it again. So of course that means that the ends of my hair have had more chemical treatments, thus they are able to absorb more pigment. And then finally here you can see a strand of hair how it looks if it's been broken or frayed. I actually thought that this initially was one of the strands of hair from my arm um, but then when I looked at it under the microscope I saw it was purple so I was able to determine instead it was in fact um, a hair strand from my head that just got broken in half and that's where you can see that frayed edge there. So then let's look at one of the hairs from my arm, which we know is gonna look a little different um, just because of the fact that A, it's from a different part of our body, um, it might have a, a frayed or a blunt end um, because they get shaved or just rubbed against our fabric. So I'm gonna do the strand right here. Let's see, the problem with the strands of hair from my arm is that they're so small, I don't know where it went. Well, that's why I have two. Okay, so I've got my strand of hair here on the slide, and then I'll put my slide cover right on top. Boop, perfect. Look at that, no air bubbles. You can see the strand of hair. So now let's look at this one under the microscope. All right, so this is a strand of hair from my arm. You can see the end of it has the follicle. There's not nearly as much follicle tissue on this one. Um, it was a little bit more difficult for me to pull it out with the follicle intact. Um, but here you can see the end of the hair strand. Notice how it's a nice blunt end. Um, there's more color deposited into this strand, and it's nice you can compare it to the purple from my hair here. Okay, and then lastly, let's look at the hair cast. So, I know that the latex is dried because it's nice and clear. Um, let me show you guys. So the latex is dried, it's nice and clear. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull off these strands of hair, and hopefully one of these, at least, leaves us a nice cast. So let me see if I can find one for us on the microscope and then we'll look at it together. So here we can see that I was able to get a pretty good cast impression of my cuticle. You can see how the direction of the imbricate scales point from the bottom of the slide towards the top, which tells me that the proximal end, the end that grew out of my scalp, is at the bottom of the slide while the distal end, the tip of my hair, is at the top of the slide. Well, looking at all of these, you guys should have enough information to go through the worksheet and answer all of those questions. Of course, like always, um, if you guys have any questions from me, then please just send me an email and I'll help you out. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing your interpretation of, of my different hair strands. All right, I'll see you guys soon.